Yeah, if yeah, if you've got if you've got one more you can do for us. That'll get us settled and then get the show started. Yeah, we, we yeah, we were sitting in the in the other room so we didn't get to experience it, so yeah, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. The musical numbers are being performed by the Mesa High School Choir uh, under the direction of, is it Marilee? Marilee Decker. Um, they will be performing the national anthem if we could stand. Actually, uh, I'd like to thank the students and then ask if there was one that wanted to 
share a little something about the program and what they've learned and what they've gained from being a part of the Mesa High School Choir? <laughs> Putting someone on the spot. This is my dream. I want to do these things. All right, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> I think they should both say something at this point. Hi, this is uh, Mesa High's Paper Choir. Uh, most of us are, we're all juniors and seniors, yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah. The midst of us have all been in choir in Mesa Public Schools for about six years, probably on average since junior high. I know that I wouldn't be the person I am today without choir, and that through choir my voice can be heard. And when I come to the choir room, appreciate what you've done. Uh, it was beautiful. Um, you know, we're sitting behind you, so we got to hear kind of the reverb. And it was amazing. You guys do. You guys are really, really good. So we really appreciate you coming and, and sharing your talents with us. Um, with that, uh, let's go ahead and show the governing board meeting procedures. Thank you. Welcome to the Mesa Public Schools Governing Board Meeting. We appreciate your interest in the district. The five elected Governing Board members volunteer countless hours and serve without compensation. The President and the Clerk of the Board are elected in January. Under state law, the Governing Board may only discuss and vote on matters that are on the agenda for tonight's meeting. Agendas are posted a minimum of 24 hours in advance on the Mesa Public Schools website and in the Curriculum Services Center. Copies of tonight's agenda are located in the lobby. Members of the public may speak to the agenda items. If you wish to comment on any agenda item, please fill out a request to address the board form. These forms are also located in the lobby. Before the item is discussed, please submit the completed form to the assistant to the governing board. Members of the public will be given a maximum of three minutes to speak. Once recognized by the governing board president, please state your name. We ask that all speakers show respect and courtesy to others. During the second regular meeting of each month, the agenda will include a call to the public, which is an opportunity to speak to the governing board about a school district matter that's not on the agenda. Please submit a request to address the board form to participate in the call to the public. If you want the governing board to consider adding an item to a future agenda, you may submit your request in writing to the board at least five working days before that meeting. The superintendent or the governing board president will consider your request. Thank you for your attendance and involvement in tonight's meeting. Still getting used to that new video. Uh, <laughs> all right, in accordance with in accordance to Governing Board Policy BDDH, uh, public participation in board meetings, Pastor David Swope of Cal Cavalry Baptist Church uh, will offer the invocation. Please stand. Thank you, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the uh, privilege we have to meet here this evening. I think of each one of the board members and those represented here today. Uh, I pray for um, your guidance going, working through the agenda, handling matters that are before them this evening. Thank you for each one. And I pray for a spirit of unanimity amongst the people and the community here um, in this uh, uh, district, this location, this city that we call home. Lord, we thank you for this uh, marvelous state, a beautiful country that we live in, and ask your blessing on this meeting before us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If we could stay standing, I'd like to call the meeting to order, and if we could follow that with a moment of silence, uh, just out of respect for 9-11. Uh,
Thank you. The uh, Pledge of Allegiance will be led by uh, Mr. Scott Thompson, Assistant Superintendent of Business and Support Services. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take care of some business first, and then we're going to do some fun stuff. Um, all right, so uh, we'll start with item five, the approval of the minutes for the regular meeting held August 28th, 2018. Uh, do I have a motion? I move that we approve the minutes from the regular meeting held August 28th. All, right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed. Okay, we'll move to the uh, item six, the certificated and classified personnel requests, including the addendum. Dr. Holmes. Mr. President, members of the board, we're asking your approval this evening of the certificated and classified personnel requests, including the addendum. All right, uh, do I have a motion? I move that we approve the certificated and classified personnel requests, including any addendum. I guess there is there an addendum or not? <laughs> yes, there is. So there there is. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And none opposed. Okay, we'll move on to item seven, the consent agenda. Uh, all items will be listed, or uh, yeah, all items listed will be considered as a group and will be approved with one motion. There will not be a separate discussion of these items unless a board member or a citizen so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered as a separate item. Uh, it's my knowledge that we don't have any requests to speak on any of those items. So, uh, can I get a motion for the approval of the consent the consent agenda? I move that we approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And none opposed. Uh, with that, let's dive into some fun stuff. Dr. Conley and the superintendent's report. Thank you, President Smith, members of the board. It's my honored to provide you our superintendent report for this week. I always like to start with why we're here and those beautiful faces having fun at graduation, but also that they're college, career, and community ready. Our vision, unprecedented excellence in education. And if you'll see that we have three fine Mesa public staff members from Chrisman, Pomeroy, and Sarine, and they were recipients of the $2,000 um, from the Safeway Foundation. And they were awarded during a grand reopening celebration of the Safeway Grocery Store at Chandler and Alma School. So congratulations to them. Our promise that every student is known by name, served by strength and need, and graduates ready for college, career, and community, and this is an opportunity to say thank you for our classroom instructional aides that provide not only instruction, but love, support, and nurturing for many of our students. Um, in particular, this is a student at Field Elementary School. Our student outcomes, uh, we've discussed these fully this evening at our work session, and again, very focused that by 2023 that we're meeting the proficiency rates in third grade reading, eighth grade math, 11th grade English language arts, increasing our graduation rate to 95%, that our students are growing and meeting their learning targets, and that all of our students are socially and emotionally strong, prepared, and supported. Our collective commitments, uh, I would again like to acknowledge our work that tonight really reflected our collective commitments together, building our strong relationships, taking responsibility for um, who we are at Mesa Public Schools, and working collaboratively. So thank you, thank you this evening. It was a wonderful work session. Professional learning communities. Um, again, this is a philosophy of how we do work in Mesa Public Schools, and the first big idea is a focus on learning. This is from Tamara Scott's American Sign Language class at Mountain View High School. Uh, language is offered in district high schools along with French, German, Spanish, and Mandarin Chinese. Um, American Sign Language is available at Dobson, Mesa, and Mountain View. And when asking why is another language important to learn, we have a content specialist, Veronica Sandoval, that said students who learn a second language improve their knowledge of their own language 
and they perform better in math and English. As a professional, people with language skills have a distinct advantage in the global market because they have an appreciation for other cultures and worldviews. So again, we'll be sharing all of our types of different world language learning in our October issue of Achieve, thanks to Helen and all of her crew at the communications department. Big idea number two, building collaborative teams. So collaborative teams, of course, extend beyond district staff, and this is Longfellow's Elementary School Curriculum Night. Local police officers played an important role in ensuring that parents could focus on the information when their students um, at home, and so officers from the Mesa Police Department played basketball with students while their parents attended the curriculum night. Super great, uh, yep, so uh, ability for all of those community connections and trust with local law enforcement. Professional learning communities, big idea, focus on results. This is Kelly Wright, Mesa High is one of our five district teachers honored as the most valuable teachers by the Arizona Diamondbacks this summer. Crisman Elementary's Carrie Sissote, Patterson Elementary's Stacy Hartman, Pomeroy Elementary's Christy Allen, and Stapley Junior High's Anne Leroy were also awarded a $1,000 grant for their classroom from the Diamondbacks. Their students will also get a pizza party from Papa John's. I'm wondering if I might need to go over and make sure that everything's managing the schools that day. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyone is eligible, of course, to nominate an educator who's made a difference and that's how they received these awards. Later this month, the foundation will select a teacher of the year from their winning teachers, and we wish, wish our Mesa Public Schools teacher the best of luck. Again, our four guiding questions, what we want our students to know, how will we know they've learned it, what do we do if they don't, and what do we do if they do, and where are we with master planning and strategic planning? Um, again, moving into the bond and override, there's informational fact sheets available in all of our schools and district offices, and then uh, six informational meetings that are in the very near future starting next week. And there they are, September 18th, September 20th, the 24th, 27th, October 2nd, and October 4th. So we're inviting all of our public to attend at least one of those. Uh, and this, of course, includes all of our feeder schools, so our elementary schools and our junior highs that feed into these specific high schools. And the meetings begin at 6 p.m. Mr. President, this concludes my superintendent report. Beautiful, thank you. Um, I, I, I do appreciate that uh, you remind us and, and the staff and our three viewers at home uh, of, of the goals that were, oh, four. <laughs> um, we're big news. We, we've, we do have some, some big goals and, and I think as one team, you know, it, uh, for those of us that are still looking at the screen, we, we are working to achieve that goal. So um, thank you for that and thank you for the continued reminder. And thank you, the community. I mean, I think that was, this is a beautiful reflection of how it takes all of us to be able to educate and, and take care of our children, so thank you. All right, with that, we'll move on to item 10, the uh, proclamation and recognition of uh, Citizenship Day and Constitution Week. Um, now historically, we pre-assign someone to read these. Uh, we haven't done that, so I will volunteer myself. I'll, I'll read that and then uh, we'll go through, and then we'll, uh, as a board, I, I'll recommend the approval of this proclamation. So um, I'm going to read this as, as we put it together. Um, trying to figure out where I want to start on this. Okay, convention delegates ratified the U.S. Constitution on September 17, 1787. This remarkable document bears witness to the wisdom of our nation's founders. To continue this legacy, we honor the Constitution and promote its principles. Whereas the United States celebrates the oldest written Constitution in the world, and whereas Mesa Public School, Schools teachers, students, uh, teaches students to respect and uphold the Constitution, civil rights and responsibilities, and whereas the Constitution's promise of freedom and opportunity has been a steadfast rock of national strength and stability. 
the governing board and superintendent of Mesa Public Schools do hereby proclaim September 17th as Citizenship Day and September 17th through the 23rd as Constitution Week. Uh, we encourage the community to join the students and staff in observing uh, this special day and, and week by reflecting on the importance of active citizenship and by reaffirming the enduring strength of our Constitution. With that said, I recommend the approval, or, or I, I need a motion for the approval rather, of the procl uh, proclamation for Citizenship Day and uh, Constitution Week. I have a motion. I make a motion for the proclamation of Citizenship Day. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And unopposed. With that, we've signed it. We will uh, we'll proceed. Um, the next item on the agenda is the bond and override update. Who wants to lead this conversation? Uh, I will begin, and this, of course, is, is not a new presentation by any mean, but a reminder uh, to all of our community and our staff that we are going towards a $300 million, ball, wow, $300 million bond and a 15% override. And if you look at the presentation on slide number, I'm going to get there. It is slide number 20 of 25, and it talks specifically about the current override and how the override's been used in the past and what it maintains. And I, I would just like to continue to note that right now with the override that is in place, um, it's 8.7 of our employee salaries. And I, I think it, as we look at what is the future of public education and how are we going to remain competitive, this is an important talking point for all of us to be able to share around this is a way for us to have local control um, of our funds and be able to take care of our current staff and be able to retain them at the, at the rate of what is able um, in our community. So kind of along those lines, I, I had one of our uh, bus drivers reach out to me. We've, we've got um, you know, just, just talking about the importance of the bond and the override. Um, right now we've got a major uh, driver shortage. I know we're not the only district to deal with it, but we're the only district I care about. <laughs> <laughs> so my focus is Me here. too. Um, you know, there's, I, I asked for specific input from this person, and, and I did it with the intention of sharing it with, uh, with everybody in the board tonight so that as we work through this and we promote this, we we have a, a more personal story um, and direct feedback from those that are, that are impacted by the success of, of uh, this bond and this override. Uh, for the bus driver specifically, it's a, it's a low starting wage. We've had lots of conversation with uh, Scott Thompson about that. Um, and we're, we're working to address that, but that's drastically impact, impacting those uh, drivers. Um, right now we have drivers that are less than full-time, so they don't get benefits. Uh, they also don't get a full paycheck, so that's, that makes it more difficult for our drivers uh, to, to keep and retain them, is, is what I'm being told. So um, kind of along those lines and possibly connected, and Dr. Holmes maybe <laughs> can help me understand this better. Uh, but the un unpaid holidays, and we do have gaps during the summertime where we don't have routes for those drivers uh, to drive. I mean, we've also got, because of the shortage, we've got um, kids that are impacted because we've got long routes. We're having to uh, reroute some of these buses, and these kids are sitting on the buses longer. If we get, if, if we can figure out this bond and this override, um, you know, these are lives and a direct story, someone that's reached out that is kind of feeling desperate, um, wants to be heard, wants to make sure that a job that he's very passionate about, this, this I, I have met with this, uh, with this driver, he's very passionate about what he's doing. He, he knows the impact that he has on the students. And I'm not sure what we can do with that aside from just tack it on to um, 
our passion and our drive for promoting and, and supporting this, this bond and the significance uh, of the override. Um, does that prompt any additional discussion? Or Dr. Holmes, is there anything you'd like to address? Well, I think your, your last point um, is particularly noteworthy and it's, it's really not just our bus drivers. Um, you are correct in that you, you stated earlier that it's a problem around the district. I can tell you I sat on a panel at the ASBO Law Conference last week and that was the discussion point in all of um, support staffing was the shortage of bus drivers um, across the state. Um, you know, here in Mesa, we're, we're at about 89% uh, um, of, of staffing, if you will. So, um, you know, on the one hand, you might think, well, that's not bad, 89%. Um, but on the other hand, there's, there's a number of routes out there that aren't being covered the way they need to be covered and folks that do have other jobs or are driving buses to, um, uh, to make sure that our kids uh, get to and from school safely. So um, it, it, it is a big deal. Um, we, we do recognize that uh, pay is an issue uh, and that um, um, it, it's directly connected to the conversation that we have had several times uh, about our classified compensation overall. Uh, I will share with you that in the world of, of meet and confer, bus driver pay ha in particular um, has been uh, a point of discussion. When we, um, uh, when we just redid our, our classified compensation system recently, one of the things that we actually did was, uh, and, and I may need to remind you on this, uh, we had a consultant advise us as to where they believed um, various positions should be placed on, on the new schedule. Um, and you know, at the t we took the advice of the, of the consultant, but in the area of bus drivers in, in particular, that was one that we pushed. Um, so um, th they, they originally were recommended to be at one level, we pushed them to be up at the next level. Um, so that's, that was a, the first active step that we took, but even uh, drawing to the close of the meet and confer uh, process this last year, uh, we ended basically saying that this has got to, this is, we're going to have to come back to this one and find a way to prioritize, um, you know, what, we're, what we do for pay for bus drivers uh, next year. So that's already um, in our sights, if you will. But we, we probably can't say that without coming back to one of the last things you said and recognizing that uh, pay for all of our support personnel is, um, is an incredibly big deal. And uh, you know, we'll, you know, how we'll be able to manage that is absolutely gonna be connected to the uh, outcome of the override bond and override election. A couple other things that we're doing uh, President Smith is I've authorized um, all new hires in transportation right now to be full time. So given our shortage, they're going to be driving 40 hours a week anyway. So instead of offering the part time build up to full time, we're bringing them straight in at full time, um, which means they're immediately eligible for bidding routes and doing some other things. Um, so we're trying to address that, but the the end game is the override because um, starting pay is, is a way we fix this at the end of the day. It is a highly skilled position to drive a bus and we need to pay an appropriate compensation for that highly skilled individual. Um, they have to achieve a CDL um, and go through a great deal of training to do their job and at the end of the day that needs to be compensated effectively and we need the override capacity to do that. Any additional discussion from the board? Comments uh, at the bond or the override of the presentation? Well, I would certainly ask, I, I mean, the governing board, it, you know, around ideas and, and creativity to help us as well around this idea of being able to fund. Um, I mean, we're certainly open to suggestions, uh, right? <laughs> Absolutely, we're always looking for new ideas around the table. So, you know, as, as, as you're talking to folks, uh, 
uh, about this particular issue and if there are some some good ideas that strike you please uh, please share because they might be ideas that that we haven't considered and I, I mean I would really say out of the box that creativity because right now we're not able to meet that demand um, you know and I realize that in-depth discussion isn't on the agenda, so I'll, I'll try to stay surface level, but I did get a recommendation or a suggestion that we look at potentially uh, combining or creating or promoting something within our CTE programs uh, for CDL. I don't know if that's something we could look at. Again, I don't think we can go into depth on discussion with that because we're in a long enough well, discussion. But, but no, actually, I mean, I think that I think it is on the agenda. This could definitely be part of the bond and the override discussion. And and it, we we've we've kind of thrown that out. Could we have a CDL program for our CTE? And then the thought of um, so please forgive me if this offends, but the idea of an 18 year old driving some of our six or seven year olds around it does concern me but at the same time I mean we do have a significant need and we have a job market that needs to be filled I well I won't share what I would I wouldn't want my 18 year old to drive them around um. we also have plenty of other openings so I don't want to dismiss that food service is struggling uh, operations uh, almost every classified position we have uh, instructional aids across the board um, economy is good right now and so uh, there's lots of competition for folks out there but I think the idea of growing our own is never a bad idea um, and we need to continue to look for creative solutions our fo food service department is looking at temporary services to see if they can help staff food I mean you can imagine the competition in food service right I mean e everything from McDonald's to you know the local restaurant is hiring food service workers so um, we don't know if that'll be successful but we're looking for options and we're exploring every avenue and if people have creative ideas we're very much open you know and student interns are always a, a possibility I mean the tech department does a fantastic job using student interns throughout the summer so is that something we could look at especially with food service that uh, and offer credit those are the types of things that we need to be really creative with we can get Helen on it <laughs> uh, <laughs> more well, social yeah. media and marketing <laughs> <laughs> she's no, very good at that launch another social media campaign <laughs> I, I do want to say one of the things that we do very well is build community and make um, school family Mesa, um, the hallmark of where people want to be, what they want to do. So I think one of the things is when we think about that creativity and we think about what's attractive, it's not just honing in on the salary. We, I think it's important that we start talking to our communities about adding those bells and whistles, those unique things. Like I remember being in an environment that one of the bennies was I'm a coffee person, so every day there's Keurigs happening. Like I was in a radio station the other day, people go just because in the morning you have the Keurig, you have bagels, you have all these things, and it's like, this is why people come. There is a salary, that, but just the, you know, and the new generation of looking at what GoDaddy's doing, looking at what Google's doing. Yes, they have big money, but it's how you made us feel. And we think about the teaching profession we know a lot of our teachers didn't go into the profession to raise the big bucks, but they want to be honored, respected, and those benefits and continuing to really hone in on our brand is our people and how we feel about community and family. So I think we need to get back to our community partners and pulling out those unique widgets, gadgets, and all of those things that just communicate love in a certain kind of way. It's kind of hokey, but that's why I love Mesa. I really appreciate this conversation. I know in the past when we've talked about bond and override, it's been specific to the, the presentation and we haven't really dug into, uh, on a personal level, the impact and the uh, benefits uh, to our employees directly. Um, you know, I, I talked specifically about bus drivers, but we do have, you know, as, as uh, Scott Thompson mentioned, we do have other groups that have shortages uh, and I don't want to don't want to brush over them, um, but 
I am very grateful for all of our employees and for everything that they do uh, for all of our students. And I uh, appreciate that. It, um, we have no action to take on this bond and override. Uh, we've already approved it. It's, uh, it's the one that's going to be presented starting next week, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Monday. Um, so with that, Let's move to item 12. Jenny. <laughs> I move that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Not opposed. Thanks.